Hi, uh, my name is Lenore von Stein, and this is uh, another episode of The Facts. And this is a, tonight we're having a discussion. You know, the Facts is a, combines episodes of music and episodes of discussion, uh, another kind of music. And uh, with me tonight is Bill Crane, a uh, professor of psychology and education at the uh, City College, City University of New York, and Alan Fagenberg. Uh, professor of Architecture and Education, uh, c c again, City College, City University of New York. And what we're going to talk, and these, these guys are, they've achieved. <laughs> and we're going to talk tonight about uh, the achievement gap, this so-called so achievement gap. And when I was a kid, I was a I was an underachiever, and, and I, it was a, a badge of, it was a protective coat and a badge of courage. And as an adult, I've become an overachiever. Um, uh, and um, I just want to read this little thing that I, I read in the last music episode, because the, these talk episodes, they feed the music and maybe vice versa. Well, in this case, it's obviously vice versa. So this is by this guy, Montaigne. And Montaigne was writing in the 1500s essays. And he, he, the time he was living in, lots of wars, there's the plague, there's the autocratic this and that. And this is what he wrote, a little piece of what he wrote on liberty. Uh, All my small wisdom in these civil and tumultuous wars wherein we now live doth wholly employ itself that they may not interrupt my liberty to go and come wherever I list. Laws are now maintained on credit not because they are essentially just, but because they are laws. It is the mystical foundation of their authority. They have none other. There is nothing so grossly and largely offending, nor so ordinarily wronging as the laws. Whosoever obeyeth them because they are just, obeys them not justly the way as he ought. A hard one to follow up. Well, I'll start. Okay. Um, we we're talking about the achievement gap, and this is being um, put forward in a lot of our media and everything, and I think it's a misrepresentation of what actually is happening. And I would pose that there are alternatives to what is so-called the achievement gap. I would call it an opportunity gap, a resource gap, an expectation gap, a perception gap, a income gap, a housing gap, a health gap, a nutrition gap, an ethnic gap, and primarily a class gap. A gap between the haves and the haves nots that are constantly growing and of course are reflected in what we're being told is the achievement gap of our young people. Very good. Puts it in a broad <laughs> context. Yeah. When, uh, when we talk about the achievement gap in education, um, what people primarily mean is differences in standardized test scores. That, uh, low income students and students of color have low, lower test scores than um, white students and upper middle class uh, students. And uh, the achievement gap, I think, like Alan says, has broad roots. A lot of it is economic. Uh, huge, probably a huge amount of it is economic since we know standardized tests correlate with income uh, substantially, uh, but when you talk, when you focus so much on test scores, is, there's a real danger, and I think it's being played out, is that you cheapen education for everybody. Uh, Test-driven education is a tedious education, an education that dulls the mind and puts real constraints on the mind. It does not allow for creative thinking or critical thinking. It doesn't allow for empathy, uh, independence of thought, all kinds of th things and that we uh, I think we'd like to see in development that are not measured by the test. When you just focus on the tests, what you do is make education a very dreary enterprise for all the students. And um, it has the effect of deadening the minds. A lot of middle class communities don't put up with the tests. They, That's right. they don't put up with them uh, because they don't want their kids' minds deadened. So the effect is you're really are deadening more of the, more the poorer kids and the kids of color. And um, maybe that's the ultimate 
purpose of it. But the achievement gap, you know, what we want, like he's, Alan says, you want an opportunity for everybody, full opportunity, the kind of the same education, but you want an education that means something in terms of developing children's yeah. minds. You don't want an education that dulls their minds or cripples them with fear of failing tests. And, and um, so it, it, the whole, it has to be rephrased. I'm surprised that, that intelligent people like editors of the New York Times and others can't see the, what's happening well, here. Maybe they can't see it. Maybe that's where the achievement gap is. <laughs> between our understanding of the New York Times. But I think, uh, yeah, I agree with what, what you're saying, Bill, and I think to add to it is also, when we're talking about achievement gap, and it's done through testing, standardized testing, that's set up by who? Who sets up the standardized testing, and what is, it to, what is it to test? And if you have certain people in creative areas, music, dance, art, theater, how do you test that? How do you set up a test where there are answers that are either written or multiple choice that test somebody's creativity? So you've also then eliminated this entire other yes. group of people, and you say, well, we'll deal with that in another way. And I don't know how that, how that way is and how you go about it. I guess what uh, it's kind of uh, from, from another perspective in society, it, 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 Am I achieving entrance into the mainstream society? Am I buying a ticket to ride on a boat I don't want to ride on? You know, I, I, that, 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 I mean, I want to ride on it. I want, to, I want a good income. I want stability, that kind of stability. But I don't want to buy into a system that, that is so offensive. Uh, and um, so, I mean, that, that's, that's, that's been an issue for me. I mean, what, 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 what how can I achieve? How can I achieve the 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 things I want to achieve without selling my soul? Right. Achievement really is social status, is what you mean. But it's measured by in, in education. It's, it's tests. That's all I mean by it. But achievement, we mean broadly, is social status. I think you put it well. Can how do you achieve without selling your soul? You you probably we probably all know people who've made it to. The, top rungs of society and they've learned to say what others want them to say. Mm -hmm. They've learned to toe the line and they have lost some of their capacities. We see it, I think, we see it in the in universities. We certainly see deans and presidents always qualifying their words, never coming out and saying anything. Only the faculty are allowed to. Yeah, and only sometimes. And sometimes we have a case that Alan and I are very upset about with Glenn Beck has uh, attacked. Um, yes, attacked that lovely lady, yeah, that, that, that Devin, thoughtful lady. Francis, Francis Fox Devin, and, uh, and now she's getting death threats. So she, you say what's on your mind and you get death threats. Yeah. And, uh, well, I think you're, you know, what you're raising, what we're raising is what, what achievement actually means. And you know, to achieve something, what does that mean? Does it mean to achieve a, a grade or status or money or to achieve inner... Yeah. satisfaction and I think a lot of times this achievement is is a voice in us from kind of outside definitions of what that means and we're not even asked to fulfill our own self achievements you know what do you want to do what do you want to be where do you want right. to get at well you've achieved an A average and you've achieved the honor society and you you have achieved by somebody else uh, recognizing that or designating that it doesn't yes, come from yes. within like right. you're saying right in the old developmental psychologists at the middle of the century, some of them distinguished between achievement and development. And mm -hmm. Achievement is what you do socially, it's, it's assessed mostly by tests, and the development has to do with the kinds of qualities that we'd like people, you know, the kids to develop. Like they, We'd like them to become insightful, sensitive to other people. We'd like them to think for themselves. We'd like them to be develop their creativity, find themselves. You see, some people think the purpose of education really should be to find oneself, one's calling, to find out what one wants to do, yeah, sort true. through all the opportunities, not achieve, 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 but sort things out, experiment yes. with this and that until one really knows what one's meant to do. So that's a whole. There's a whole. There's many more, much broader components to education than are measured by this test. And as you say, I, I'd be interested, how do you know if somebody is a good musician? You don't t give them a test. I mean, 
Well, you do actually. You take, I mean, I, I you, you take a comprehensive test and then you take a, I mean, when I did a master's, you took a comprehensive test at the end and it, it, it four parts and do it, you know, in a timed way. Uh, can you spit back? Can you listen to a piece of music and tell what, you know, when that was written right. and who wrote it and, and it's other stuff. Uh, and, um, but I, I was thinking when you were talking that maybe the New York Times is right on the money when it uses the term achievement gap because they understand the, the, the limitations in which we're speaking, you Absolutely. know, in which they're speaking and those limitations seem to be fine with them. You know, this mm -hmm. is, this is uh, your achieving entrance into the, um, to the rock. And uh, you, you, and that's what is, is it, isn't that what it's all about? Oh, uh, and as far as you can go, uh, or as far as you, it's, 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 it's like, I don't know, it's, it's, it's like some, some old fashioned villagers, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> trying to figure out how to please the gods. Um, um, but it's very clear how to please the gods mm -hmm. in terms of remuneration from the gods. Yeah. Right. Some people, go ahead. You know, some people would say, well, it's fine for us to talk about all these qualities since we are part of the uh, achieve, achieve You've achievers. achievers. And, but what about the kids who are coming from very poor areas and are not part of the society? Are we just going to ignore them? But I think they should develop well, fully also. It's not, or every, it's, and it's probably, it's hurting all, this test-driven education is hurting everybody. It's not, I remember I have this, this memory, know. there was a year when I was uh, in high school and I was at counselor camp, and at the break, my parents came up with a stack of books like this. Why? They just talked to the principal, and they were concerned because I was very smart, but I was an underachiever. I wasn't <laughs> working up to my potential. So what did I have to do? I had to read and study more, which, of course, I didn't do. I was doing sports. And partly what it brings is um, I sit on this, this committee at City, which is for a special program for high school students coming in. It's called the Honors Program. And it has contradictions, but uh, a couple years ago when I was sitting, and one of the things that we were supposed to do is set admissions based on SAT scores and grade point average in high school and then other criteria. Special events, uh, resumes, writing, uh, recommendations, etc. And a couple of us kept raising that this is not a good criteria, especially in these other areas like art and music and everything. We have to look at students in a different way. And I must say proudly that my colleagues are very open to that kind of discussion. Anyway, at one point we're going around and I said to my colleagues, most of fact, I said, you know, this is really interesting. Here, I'm sitting here as a professor judging other kids coming out of high school and resisting looking at SAT scores and GPAs because I was a really poor student. And if it was based on SAT scores and GPAs, I would never get into college. And as we went around the room, almost every one of the faculty members who had achieved some level of prominence in their field basically had the same story. They weren't the achievers in high school. They were the some ones that were kind of on the fringe of everything. Yeah. And it was really fascinating um, to experience that, to hear that. I. Uh what is the fringe by you? <laughs> <laughs> I saw the uh, um, creative perceptions. <laughs> well, it's, there's something to it. The um, the uh, the IQ test used to be used yeah, instead of the SAT when I was a kid, and um, I remember reading that the I think Madonna tested at something like 140, which is very high, and J D. Salinger, the Catcher in the Rye, yeah. and all others tested at 101. Which wow! Very, <laughs> <laughs> makes no sense. Very low for a, yeah, a, a, yeah, a deep thinker. So, uh, what? Um, I mean, his mind might have been on other things, for sure. or resisting the whole process of being tested, or something, uh, or giving wise crack answers. Uh, who knows what was going on? But um, it just so many capacities are not tested. And they broke up the S, the uh, IQ test. Yeah. Uh, I think it's pretty much. Was a little biased. Mm -hmm. I, I, one of the other things that strikes me about this notion of the achievement gap is, a, in, in, I see it used um, uh, as a as a weapon against uh, people. You know, you you uh, uh, become a. I, I I work for nonprofits and they're always talking about the children becoming useful members of the society. Uh, uh, yeah. You know, as if they're not already useful members of the society. Right. And and. And 
it, so it's 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 a spear, you know, that's being used to to poke them, and, and 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 which can't work really for most people. It only makes you, it only makes you uh, more. Um, my neighbor said this is a little side, but it's, it might be useful. Um, she said to me today, she was very upset because her kid is watching TV, her teenage daughter is watching TV all the time. And I said, when I was a teenager, I watched TV all the time. I, I still watch TV all the time. And um, she's and I and I remembered that my father used to tell me how that it was really stupid. And the thing that that made me think was that, although I found it hard to believe, that I was stupid, or at least some portion of me was stupid. And uh, but it 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 it, it wasn't the uh, it, it didn't have anything to do with the TV. You know, it was a uh -huh. separate thing. You know, it, this was just a symptom of my stupidity. Um, so, do you know when they're 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 they've shown they've done this stuff where they've done brain scans, and apparently the brain activity when you're watching television is lower than when you're just sitting there <laughs> or sleeping. Yes, I've heard that. I've heard that. So it does rot the brain. Yeah, I mean, probably. But, but what? Well. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to emphasize again, back, I don't know if I made it clear enough in terms of the achievement gap and the, um, the, the gaps in society, but the, the kids just hate all this test prep and test driven education. and it, it's, uh, it's very oppressive. And what happens is that the kids in the low-income areas are getting more of it. So they're, they're really getting, because they, they have to go to special classes, they don't, get to, they don't get exemptions, they have to, some schools now, if you don't, um, well, they're cutting out recess, they're cutting, they, the only gifted and talented they don't get to go to where you do fun things. They are, they spend the extra time in tutorials, and to, more and more test prep. They spend weekends on test prep. That's the, um, that's what's happening. And so, really, their minds are getting crushed. And if if I were an evil dictator, I would implement a, a system like this, where education is governed by tests, where people fill out the bubbles and say what the test maker and authorities say is, are the right answers. Right. You give the right answers, and um, and I would have the have nots in the society get more of it so they don't get wise and rebel. And I would not give them critical thinking. I would make sure that their minds are, are They're always scrambling trampled. to 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 catch yeah. up to where all yeah, the, the up, good people are. Yeah, yeah, where the high achievers are. And um, you know, I think you make another good really good point, both of you, when you say, you know, there's are there inner qualities that we want to nurture. Mm -hmm. And you say, you know, if you you can achieve and sell your soul, I mean they're I mean, it, once I get back to the arts or the architecture and music, and I think you, there you maybe see more. And you say somebody has, an artist has a certain soulfulness or there's a certain sense of beauty and there, or there's certain qualities that are, and nobody measures these qualities. They're in the performance. Uh, what you talked about, Lenore, in terms of the tests you took to, what were these for your master's degree or where? Yeah, you had to take a comprehensive I remember there was there would be people. There was somebody coming back from Texas who failed one part, and she had to pass it. You know, to come back to take it, and you know, on top of your thesis, right? Mm -hmm. And um, uh, but I, there was there was once a a, a, a big band arranging. A th I won't I won't give out famous people. Um, a class for two years outside of school, and and we were being taught to, and I went into it not because I was so interested in big band, but because I wanted to learn about how they were dealing with the brass, and um, and the and the um, we would do a, we we would do something every every end, end of every semester, and the people who were succeeding in the class were sounding more and more like the teacher. They were getting uh -huh. his sound, right? And the teacher was getting, you could always hear my work, it was completely different, you know? Uh -huh. it, it, you, and and, and my, the teacher got more and more frustrated with me, and he, at one point he told me, you, you have the wrong ears. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, and, and then he got really nasty with some really nasty scenes, which I, and I finally left. But it, 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 the whole idea was to teach this particular sound, which happens a lot in music, to teach this particular way of dealing with expression. It happens a lot in the arts. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't get that way, then, uh, you know, the highway for you, you, weren't, mm -hmm. you, didn't, you didn't achieve, you know, and the fact that the fact that I was taking 
things that he was saying and applying them to the, what I wanted to talk about. You know, with, he gave you parameters. I was working within those parameters. I just wasn't working, you know, I just wasn't copying him. Yeah. I was a, interpreting those parameters. Uh, I, uh, I recently read an article, an old essay by Kenneth Clark, the art critic, and, and this has to do with painting, and he listed a whole a number of painters and went into painted according to the dictates of convention and were highly successful until old age, very old age, and then their art seemed to break down, uh, but they, it, came, it, came, it came to life and uh, they started painting kind of wild things. Turner was one. Turner. Turner, who maybe invented, some people think invented abstract art. And at this time they thought he was going against all the conventions because he was, it was losing the representation and the and the colors faded, and you couldn't tell where the sea ended and the sky began, and all, all these beautiful things. Now we consider beautiful, great innovations, but there were many like him who, yeah. they thought he'd lost his mind at the end, but he, before that he was a very if you, you, know, you know, the other day, one, one, one time we were, we were filming in here, and there was some music out there that you dug, you know, and I didn't, <laughs> and, um, and because what I heard, you know, and I, I, it was better than I said, it was meaner than I, I should have been. And, and that I actually felt. But what I heard, you know, each one of us are in, individual, right? I mean, they, and, and so you, your art should really, if you're really telling the truth, your art should be really individual. And, what, and mm. what I try to do is, you know, is because I think that's the way to happiness for me, is to expose myself, you know, more and more, you know, not literally, but, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, and oh, shocks. <laughs> and, um, but what I, when I heard these people, it wasn't like they were saying, look at me. They were saying, look at how well I fit in. Look at how, look at how I can, I can get along. I can go along and get along and I can be part of this bunch. You can't even see me, man. Mm. You can't even see me. I'm not being so obnoxious as to, is to show you what life is like for me. And an artist that doesn't show you what life is like for them, to, I, to me, I ain't showing you much. It was, it was just a thing I saw that somebody sent me from the TED on, on the computer, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it was the, a talk being given by a guy, I think he was a, a doctor, a physician or something, and he was studying the brains of creative people, especially musicians. And they had musicians, and what they did is they put them in the brain scan and could read the brain activity. And with people primarily who w were creative musicians who would compose on the spot, you could see as they went in and as they did it and as they were playing their music because he gave them little keyboards to play with, that part of the brain just started expanding hugely. And he had a jazz musician, Chick Corea, and he had a hip-hop musician. And the same thing was happening, and it was absolutely phenomenal. And he said, not with classical musicians who practice and play music that somebody else has written, but people who are creating, the mind expands with it. Hmm. Well, I, I just want to say a word about classical, because I'm, I'm, I'm mighty fond of them. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> because what happens is to a performer, any performer, and I, I've been both an actor and, and a musician, is that y y when you're working with somebody else's stuff, you have this little narrow area in which to create. You know, they g they're dictating the, these these tight little you know parameters. Uh, the director tells you you got to do this and you got to do that. Now you got to figure out a way to bring it to life. No longer having anything, just fulfill their desires. Your way, make mm -hmm. this. You know, and so with. And, and I used to think that was that was that was cool. That was that was you know, and it was very private as opposed to a compositional artist. You know, you, mm -hmm. you solve the problem for them, they didn't even know it. They say, yeah, that's what I want. Yeah, you didn't even know what you wanted. I gave you what you wanted, you know. It's, it's you, 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 and so, so they are being, you know, I mean, Marlon Brando, certainly very creative. Geraldine Page, very creative. Uh, um, there's some wonderful, but, but I understand what you're saying, the compositional stuff, but I just want to say a word about performers too, that performers are also, good performers are also creating within that. Yeah. It, Certainly some people can create and achieve both, so those come to mind. Mm -hmm. um, but if you, like Einstein wrote impressive things on this whole topic. He said after he took his PhD exam, he couldn't work for a year. The exams just took it out of him. They just debilitated him. And then he was working as a, a clerk yeah. when he created the theory of relativity. But, yeah. He was not a high achiever at that point in the social status. Of the, he didn't have a university appointment. He had no major appointment when he broke through. And he wrote on education. He said, what you want to foster is the imagination. 
what he called... Imagination is more important than knowledge. Right. Or but, holy curiosity. He used that phrase, you do not stifle the holy curiosity. He, he, he didn't write that way very often, but I guess he felt at the moment that the child's curiosity has to be preserved. You know. we're, 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 we're uh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. I, who, who would have known it? Not me, but anyway. We, we, we've got two minutes, right? Uh -huh. Something like that. And um, so you're always good at this point. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I, keep, I keep scratching all these notes we're talking because it raises all kinds of other issues. Um, well, I think we'll come back, but what, what we're talking about when I think all of us are talking about is this achievement gap is being externally defined Yes. for us and that it's being very narrowly mm -hmm. and rigidly defined and that there's a reason for it. It's not just arbitrary, that there's a reason why there's a definition of this to include some and to exclude others. Mm -hmm. And there's a, a goal to be achieved of this of pulling off what those in society feel they need for their own support and continuity and disparaging to put the, the others aside. Mm -hmm. Those that would, you know, riot in Tunisia. Right. Even Ooh. in its own terms, it's not being closed. I mean, they, Except they're achieving what they want. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in terms, yeah, in terms of the goals, high, the test scores are still going on their own parallel paths or still not competing with Finland and the other no, not uh, nations. Well, ironically, put less emphasis on achievement than we do. But anyway, um, it is externally defined, and the goals may be to preserve the to preserve. dead in the minds of everyone, or dead, and particularly those who could revolt. I think. I, I agree. With you. If, if people are questioning, they, they they may question too much. That's right. And then it becomes dangerous. So it, it's it's just a, another way of keeping us in line and. Right. And um, it's sad that so many buy into it. Well, I'm sorry. No, I, you know, I, 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 we've got 30 seconds, 30 little itsy bitsy fritzy seconds. I mean, maybe as this series goes on, I'm going to learn what 30 seconds is. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 a really a, 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 a so 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 Bill Crane, thank you very much for You're once welcome. more uh, right. appearing on the facts, and Alan Fagenberg for yeah. appearing on the facts. Pleasure. And uh, yeah. it's our pleasure to have you okay. here and. And, and so, you know, we'll be back with more facts <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, um, that come out of fiction and, and that don't. Good night. Good night.